few weeks ago, I met parents whose 11-year-old boy committed suicide. And I talked to the mother and I said, what happened? How does an 11-year-old commit suicide? 11-year-old, gorgeous child, has a whole life ahead of them. And she said, I don't understand it. He was a healthy, happy, normal child. He always did what we wanted. And I said, huh? Could you repeat that? I wanted her to hear it. And she said he was a healthy, happy, normal child who always did what we wanted. And they said, tell me what happened in the last 24 hours of his life. And she said, nothing. I said, tell me anyway. She said he came home from school, 11 year old. He made one of these long faces, you know, an unhappy, miserable day. And he was kind of roaming around the house. Obviously, something happened. And before dinner, the father confronted him, said, what's the matter with you? And he confessed that he brought two back grades home. Nobody asked how bad is bad, or how come, or was it a bad subject, or he didn't get along with the teacher, or discuss what's happening. The father said he tried to teach him a lesson. And so he said to this 11-year-old, if you don't care, we don't care. And they decided to have dinner, and nobody was allowed to look at him during the meal. And you watch an 11-year-old try to swallow a meal and desperately look at his brothers and sisters and mom and dad. And everywhere he looks, they look away from him. And he was obviously heartbroken. And that's my interpretation. He went to his room, hoping desperately for somebody to come. Nobody came. When mother made her rounds to tuck her children into bed and kiss them goodnight, she decided to teach him a lesson. And she skipped his room, never tucked him in never kissed him goodnight, and the next morning he shot himself. But in the language of grown-ups, nothing happened. He was a healthy, happy, normal child who always did what we wanted. And that is the tragedy of our generation. Because if you're raised with I love you if, children take things very literally, and children believe that they are only loved if they bring good grades home. I love you if you make it through high school. Boy, would I love you if I can say my son the doctor. I love you if you bring the right boyfriends or right girlfriends home, and they have to belong to the right denomination. You know, all the ifs and ifs and ifs. Any human being that was born in a family that loves if will have problems in life horrible problems, because they all become prostitutes. You will prostitute yourself with good behavior. Do, do you understand the word prostitution, in what sense I mean that? You will believe that you can buy love with good grades, that you can buy love with good behavior, that you can buy love if you look pretty. And your need for approval will always be insatiable. And you will always be unhappy for the rest of your life. That's why earlier generations had less of a problem, because they had grandmas. And they had grandpas, and they had three or four generation people in the house. And there was always somebody, an old uncle or a grandma, that loved you totally and completely. No matter how dirty you came home, she loved and hugged you. There was never an if attached to it. Any human being who has experienced unconditional love once, will be okay. If it doesn't have to be, you know, necessarily your mother or father, who were also raised without unconditional love. And because of the depression and the hardships parents had, their only desire was that you should have it better. And therefore, you should go to better school, you should have an education, you should have more security, as if that would help you at the end of your life. 